hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is jasmine and this is my season now i am here today with a prophetic dream that god gave me last night so i'm gonna be sharing um a dream with you guys on today um but before i get started i do want to say happy easter and happy reservation sunday um happy easter if you celebrate and just happy reservation sunday to everybody i love you guys so much um so i do want to start by praying so dear heavenly father i just want to say thank you for allowing us lord god to see another beautiful day oh god lord we thank you for your creation on today lord god we thank you that when you created when you came lord god you had a thought you had us in mind oh god lord i thank you that you've already went ahead of us and prepared a place for us oh god because your word says that lord god that you are right now seated at the right hand of the father interceding on our behalf right now in the name of jesus christ so lord i thank you Jesus, hey, Gondoro. I thank you, Lord, that you are speaking up on our behalves right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to repent, Lord, for trying to be God in my life, for trying to fix everything on my own, for trying to just do things that you never even meant for me to do, Lord God. Lord, just right now, I just want to resurrender and put it back into your hands, Lord God, because I've come to the realization that only you can do it, Lord God. So, Jesus, I ask that you do what only you can do, Lord God. I resurrender everything back to you, Lord God. And I just bring your people back to you again, Lord God. The ones that has that have strayed away, Lord God. The ones that have gotten lost, Lord God. Lord, we just we just I ask that this word locates them, Lord God, and just bring them back to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, so yes, you guys, I want to share the prophetic dream that I had last night. So, um, before I went to bed last night, I simply just asked God, you know, to just, whatever you want to show me, sh show me, Lord. If you want to tell me something, you know, you could speak to me or give me a prophetic dream. You know, sometimes we just have to invite the Lord in and make ourselves available to him because God is a gentleman. Like he ain't going to force himself on us. He want to be, you know, invited in. So basically I invited him in and I was just like, do what you want to do. You know, if there's something you want me to hear, if there's something you want to say to me, if there's something you want to show me, I'm available to you. I'm telling you, try it, try it. We, we, y'all don't have to be in the office of the prophetic to hear from God. We are our own prophets. If you open up your spirit, your heart, and your mind to God, he will show you. The Bible says that if you call on me, if you call on the Lord, he will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. Like God will show you things that you don't even know about yourself, about the people around you, about the things that are going on in your life, about things that are going to happen in your life. The God will give you foresight. He will give you insight on things that you need to know. And it's, it is going to help you, right? The Holy Spirit is our helper. In the name of Jesus. So um, before I share the dream, I am going to say that the way that um, prophetic dreams work for me, you know, I'm, God works with different people in different ways. But the way that I've learned that prophetic dreams work for me is, you know, it is the <clears throat> God. So the way that I learned to interpret the meaning of the dreams is basically paying attention to where I am in the dream, what I'm doing, um, what I see, and how I feel, right? That's if I'm in the dream. But if I'm not in the dream, then definitely just pay attention to what's happening in the dream, where where the dream is. You know, basically, it's the details. So within the details is the message that God is trying to get a, get across, right? That's sometimes. And then sometimes also God gives me a prophetic dream and it's literal. Like he shows me something that is going to happen um, literally. Or sometimes it's a warning dream where God will show me something is going to happen if I don't change something, right? So with that being said, y'all, I'm going to get into the dream. Just try to open up your spirit, right? Because uh, open up your spirit to it because if you look at it through your physical eyes, it may not make much sense. So you just have to tap into the spirit. 
So I just ask God that whoever this dream is for, Lord, use my mouth. Like, use my mouth and allow me to alliterate or describe it and just put it into the words where that who you have this this dream for they'll be able to receive it in jesus name i pray okay y'all so in the dream um where i was let's start with where i was it looks like i was in someone's personal space like in their home um doing their hair right so the hair i was doing was in caucasian male he was like a younger boy i was doing a caucasian when i say caucasian you know some people say white so it was a white boy a younger male um hair i was doing and his father was there as well and um there was another boy there as well. Um, I kind of picked up maybe it was his younger brother or just friend. Like just another boy was there as well. So in the dream, <clears throat> I was doing the Caucasian's boy, the white boy's hair. And I was dreadlocking his hair, right? So I was dreading his hair. And um, what I was saying to myself was... Um, well, first I'm going to say, as I was dreading his hair, I kind of picked up on as the father didn't approve of his son um, getting dreadlocks, right? That's what I was feeling from the father as he was sitting there. And then as I was doing the son's hair, I was dreading his hair. What I was saying to myself, what I was thinking was his hair is dreading easily in my mind i was like his hair is gonna um lock up fast right if you are in the african american community or you know if you know anything about dreads like pertaining to only like black people hair like it's the texture of our hair that locks so fast it is not you know coming for caucasian people or white people to get dreadlocks because the texture of their hair is you know um silky right so in order for dreadlocks to lock up it has to um your hair has to be like textured in a kinky way almost so with that being said as i was thinking that to myself i was like hmm this this caucasian boy hair is is locking is twisting you know is dreading pretty fast like and it was unusual to me. And then I looked over at the father's hair and he had dreadlocks as well. So, you know, that was just kind of strange to me. And um, at that point, that's when I woke up, you know, out of the dream. So as soon as I woke up out of the dream, I prayed for understanding. Because when I woke up, y'all, I did not know what it was about. I was like, God, are you sending me a Caucasian husband? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because if you are, I thank you in advance, right? That's what I was saying. And then um, once I prayed about it, like even before I could complete the prayer, God was just like, he was showing me that there are some things that we have to, <clears throat> Jesus, he was showing me that there are some things that we have to break off right now of ourselves before our children pick it up, right? And the reason in the dream that God was showing me that I was saying that, um, his hair was dreading fast is because is because um the father his father had dreads as well right so it's just it, god is just like these things that if we don't break it off if we don't pray against these things now as parents like our kids are gonna pick it up fast okay um <sighs> So it's a it's a very simple word, you know, it was a simple dream. And basically all God is trying to let us know is um there are some things that we have to be delivered from and 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 be set free from or else it's going to come down, it's going to fall down on our kids, y'all. And you can you can be disapproved all you want. You know, you can disapprove it all you want, but you did it like you're doing it you get what i'm saying y'all like since i've had a kid the warfare is on a whole nother level like my assignment is, is is on a whole nother level in the kingdom because not only do i have to pray you know and bind up things 
off of me but now i'm having to bind up things off of my daughter off of things on her you know not only in my bloodline but things that i didn't even know you know that she's having that's coming up against her in her father's on her father's side you know in his bloodline but thank god for the holy spirit holy spirit because god don't let us go into things blind right he will reveal the things that we need to know right so definitely seek him in prayer on the things that you know you need to be praying against for your kids right for some of us is literally you know just the the drinking problems or you know um drugs or vaping or whatever it is you, you may think that your child do not understand but let me tell y'all something the eyes are the gateway to the soul a baby or a kid can see something you know young and small and they literally they only have to see it one time and they pick up on things so quickly y'all so with that being said y'all i just kind of feel like um i don't know if this makes sense to y'all who is for is for who is not for you know just just let it go maybe the next word will be for you but this is for my parents like this is for the the gatekeepers who god have put over the next generation y'all do, do you not know that god is trusting you with the uh, the upcoming of the next generation that there are some things that when god brought us here into this earth realm he put us on assignment to 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 fight against some things and to to lord had lord give me the strength to um fight against some spirits okay that are trying because in the bible basically um there's a part where it is like this pregnant woman and she's running you know from the dragon basically the devil you know is trying to attack her and get her because of her seed okay because of the thing that she's carrying jesus so y'all with that being said you know i, I asked god for a scripture and he took me to romans 8 where he said Romans 8 28 and that basically says that all things you know we, we we know this one this is a good one right the bible says that all things work together for the good of those who love God who are called according to his purpose and then I went over into Romans 29 it says that because the ones that God foreknew he also predestined to be transformed into the image of his son we are on assignment to lead and to God and to guide these kids and to be the best image of Christ that we can be because they are literally going to manifest and become what they see you, what they see in you. Do you hear me? Oh God, I, I wish I could say this word the way that I feel it in the way that is in my spirit, y'all. But I just, I want you guys to pray and ask God to reveal to you what it is that you need to work on in yourself so it don't be passed down to the next generation, to these kids, to the bloodline curses. Let it stop with you. Hey, Gondoro. Let, let it end with you. This, this stops here. Enough is enough. The devil has been stealing from my bloodline long enough. I, this is where I draw the line in the sand. And from henceforward, Lord God, let it be nothing but generational blessings. I'm talking about, I want my baby to inherit homes and, and, and money and different things like that. You know how you hear about different people leaving behind a legacy, you know, and um, generational wealth and they inherit houses and land. <sighs> so be it unto me, Lord God. So y'all, um, that's basically all I wanted to speak on is what God was showing me is our kids are basically going to become the image of who we are. If we don't change, if we don't change for them, it was one thing when I was just doing it, you know, for myself, but God hasn't trusted me with a whole small person, an angel. Do you hear me? <laughs> And y'all know my baby, her name is Skylar, right? So when I was, when I found out I was pregnant and um, I prayed to God, I was like, God, before I even knew the gender, you know, I asked God to give me a name for my baby. And while I was sleeping, I heard Skylar and it was just like the most beautiful name, right? So I Googled it and um, the definition says honor, honorable student, right? 
honorable student, which basically to me means like she's going to be smart and she's going to learn so fast. And she really does. Like she's only one years old, right? She's like one years old. Her birthday is in July. She'll be two in July. And she can't really talk yet, but her comprehension skills, y'all are off the chart. Do you hear me? They're off the chart. She understands so, so well. And she has eyes and she can see. Like, I know everybody got eyes, but I'm talking about this girl can see so good. Like, she see, you can think you're doing something that she don't, she's not going to notice. My baby, she literally sees everything, y'all. So, with that being said, I literally have to guard her and safe keep the things that I do around her. And not only what I do, but the things that my family do around her or, you know, the, the music that we play. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus just reminded me that in the dream, there was secular music playing in the background. So that's a that's a important part that I that I forgot to mention in the dream. Like in the dream, y'all, it was sexy red playing like it was like real secular music playing. And I know a lot of y'all like <clears throat> Y'all had the baby in the car, you know, listening to the radio. I want you to know that there is spirits behind music, right? And these babies are picking up on more than you think. There are... The thing is, babies are more spiritually awoke than us because they've been here a short amount of time. You know, they, they've they been in the spirit realm longer than they've been on uh, in the earthly realm. They So they're kind of still in touch, you know, spiritually with the spirit realm. So they pick up on way more than you think, okay? Spiritually. Jesus. So we, we just got to not only safeguard their eyes, their, we got to safeguard their ears, the things that they're listening to. Not only the things that they're listening to on the radio, but the things that we're saying, the curse words, you know, she's only one years old. She can't talk yet, but she will soon. Okay. And she's only going to be saying the things and repeating the things that she hear you say. Hey, go, do, 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 bo, see. So let nothing but praises come out of your mouth. In the name of Jesus, around your kids, not only around your kids, but at all times, you know, sometimes life happens, we get frustrated, we get upset. <sighs> Be mindful of the things that you're doing around your children, because they are literally going to become what they see. They are going to be a product of their environment. This video is almost 20 minutes, y'all. I did not mean for it to be that long, because I feel like... The message is very simple. What God is trying to say that the ones that he called, first of all, he said that all things are going to work together for our good, for the ones that he's called, the ones that he predestined, the ones that he already knew before he placed us in our, our mother's womb, the ones that he already knew. He already predestined us to be created and transformed into the image of Christ. So do your best to, to put on the image of Christ and to carry the spirit of Christ and to let that reflect in your actions. And therefore, your kids who are looking up to you will also become the image of Christ as, as well. Romans 8, 29, I'm basically, you know, saying it the way that I remember it. But it says that the ones that God foreknew, he predestined to be transformed into the image of his son. Not the son of this world, not the things of this world. Jesus Christ, Lord, please protect this upcoming generation. Do you not know that the generation that's coming up is our tomorrow? They're the people of tomorrow. That's why the enemy is attacking our kids and, and at school and confusing them in their mind with their gender and different things like that. Because he knows that if he can handicap, if he can destroy our, young, our youth, our tomorrow, our future is doomed. is doomed you have to know god as a parent as a person you have to know god you have to literally let your child see you praying and worshiping god and and reading your bible be that image not only that but be what it says be long suffering be caring be loving your child is watching you
y'all sometimes when my baby you know get upset she have what, what they call a temper tantrum and she try to throw things no ma'am uh, i'm like god where, where did she pick this up at that's not that's not for me You literally have to constantly be praying over your kids because not only is she around me a lot, she go to daycare a lot. She's picking up on things that she sees at daycare. She's picking up on from the kids, from the teachers, you know. So that's just what God wanted to reveal to me is why he's on me so hard, you know, to get delivered and to live right and to not do this and not, not to wear this. And, you know, because your, your, your future generation, your child is watching you. And also what he wanted to show me was the other kid in the dream. Cause like I said, I was doing a Caucasian um, boy hair. And then there was another kid there as well. God says that it's not only your kid that's, that, that's watching you, that you're responsible for. God said it's the whole generation, the cousins, your nieces and your nephews, you know, they're watching you too. You have an impact on their lives as well. That the more that you start to live your life like Christ, the more that you surrender your life to Christ, the more that God is going to transform and renew those that are coming up, up under you. And even ones in your generation, even the ones in your bloodline, even the older generations. Because the ones that God foreknew, he already predestined. That means that the de your destiny was already written for you to be transformed into the image of Christ. I love y'all so much. I pray that you guys take this word. And take it back to God and ask for him to reveal to you what it is that you need to change about yourself. So your child can become the image that they're supposed to be in Christ. That's an assignment. Do you not know that that's in us? God is trusting you with that child. God is, he's trusting you with that, the upbringing of that child. <sighs> y'all, and it's not easy, y'all. Like, <sighs> yeah, the y'all who know, know, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty new parent and it is not easy. But you got to have God. Invite him in and he will help you raise the ki these kids the way that they're supposed to be raised. In Jesus' name, I love you guys. Have a blessed Sunday. Do some Easter egg hunting, you know, if that's, if that's your thing. Um, I have nothing but good memories, you know, around Easter. I know a lot of people going to be like, this is not a, uh, Easter is a, you know, a bad holiday or the origin of Easter is evil and different things like that. But y'all, I have nothing but good memories, you know, around Easter as kids. And only thing we can try to do is, you know, just try to give our kids good memories, you know, uh, spending time with family and barbecuing and Easter egg hunts and Sunday uh, Easter dresses and different things like that. I love you guys. Be blessed.